I have floating raft boxes here. I've got three of them. And as you can see, I've retired them for the winter. In about two months, I'll be cranking these things up and the weather should be nice enough that I can keep these things going. Here, I have three navel seedless orange trees. Now they're dwarfs. And I bought them, I believe, from Park Seed. And they're wonderful trees. They're very hardy. And they're doing very well in my greenhouse here. Here, I've got two olive trees, as you can see. To the left of it, I'm overwintering a pepper plant. It's actually an orange pepper. The olive tree that you see that's the largest is an Arbuquina olive. The olive tree to the right, the little small one that you see, this one is called a Mediterranean olive tree. Here I have three tomato plants and I'm wanting to add about six or seven more tomato plants to my collection. Now remember, it's approximately January 5th today. I think it's the 5th or the 6th. And those tomato plants are doing just fine. Now these are pepper plants that I planted from seed. And these are some pepper plants that I'm overwintering. I've got them cut all the way back. Here I have a group of pepper plants that I'm overwintering. And if you look at that plant to the left, that is a pineapple tree. And it is a dwarf. So I've been told. A friend of mine gave it to me, so I'm not exactly sure. I'm overwintering my wife's herb garden, and it's doing quite well. I have another pineapple plant. And this plant here, many of you have this plant in your houses during the winter. It's called a Meyer lemon. This tree right here, I'm overwintering, is a Hass avocado. And as you can see, I'll try to steady this video. That has is doing just fine. It's actually growing out little buds on it. And I expect in the springtime that it will flourish. The next tree that I want to show you is a fig tree. These are fairly easy to overwinter in a greenhouse and I have 20 of them planted in the ground outside. And what I do before the winter, I'll just put about six inches of wood chips at the base of the fig tree and the fig tree will go dormant. This tree here is called a cold hardy avocado tree. And this tree should be able to withstand temperatures down into the teens, double digits. 
but I'll never have it that cold because I plan on keeping it in this greenhouse. This fig tree also has little buds. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see them. This fig tree also has little buds and it's going to flourish in the springtime as well. That's a cold hardy avocado. I've got eight Dutch buckets set up. They're also retired for the winter and in about two months I plan on cranking up tomato plants. I'll use indeterminates. I'll have some cucumber as well and some pepper plants. This is a very good setup. I should be able to grow all the flowering fruiting plants for my family that we need to eat, that we want to eat. The wood burning stove is just heating up now. As you notice, I keep a pan on the stove. I keep this filled with water so that it puts steam into the air and the plants don't dry out. I will water my plants once a week and I use an organic nutrient solution of urea, potash, and bone meal, which I covered in my class. This is an Arbuquina olive. And as you can see, it's touching the top of the greenhouse. This tree put out olives last year. It's doing quite well. It didn't put out a lot of olives because it was quite a young tree. I had it in the ground, but it had a very hard winter last year. So I took it out of the ground and put it in a large pot. As you can see, it's doing quite well. It's reaching toward the top of my greenhouse and next year I'll have to cut it back a bit. I have it in quite a large pot. It should be fine in that pot for a couple of years and then I'll have to transplant it. As you can see, I have a small fan behind the wood burning stove. There is no plastic on the fan and I have it sitting on two cinder blocks and a cap block. This acts as a buffer for the heat of the wood burning stove and the fan is an all metal fan it's made for greenhouse and it blows the heat from the wood burning stove into the greenhouse I have plenty of wood for tonight it's supposed to get down to the negative three to five somewhere in that range and I'll take pictures if I can do some video I will that night it got really cold as you can see here it got zero degrees if you look at your meter to your right and 
in the greenhouse, I left the gas on because I did not want to take a chance of destroying all my hard work. So one night or two nights of leaving the gas on, if it's going to be in the low single digits, is not a problem with me because I've got so much hard work invested in keeping all of these plants alive. Most of the time, it doesn't get that cold, and the wood burning stove is well able to handle the workload. Thank you for touring my greenhouse. As we leave the greenhouse, as you notice, it's extremely cold outside. As I showed you before on the temperature gauge, it got down to zero degrees, but it was actually nice and warm, about 60 in the greenhouse. Overlooking the hill, you see my bees, the wind turbine, and the 36 solar panels, 12 on each pole. That day, there was no wind. As you can see, the wind turbine is still as can be. This wind turbine will put out 1500 watts at about 15 mile an hour wind. The day was perfectly still, but extremely cold. This is on top of the hill overlooking the valley. That's all for now. May God's blessing be with you.